Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, Neurotic News. I'm Damien Power. I don't think we ever used to do a welcome. I think we just used to start the, the thing. But um, anyway, how are you, Dan? Uh, yeah, no, it's good. Um, just, um, you know, waiting for things to reopen. Right. Okay. Again, yeah. Cool. Yeah, well, because like, yeah, you you don't have that problem, eh, where it's... no. I, uh, it's just crazy up here. It's just the sun's out and I think people are starting to get like antsy down in New South Wales and Victoria. Like, I think you want to be careful. Like you don't want to just post like you at a party in the sun, like no mask. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's so Instagram's pretty quiet at the moment. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. Cause the, the, the thing with, um, that, cause you know, they're doing that thing where like only vaccinated people will be allowed to go to, um, pubs and and bars and and movies and stuff yeah wow that's crazy but eh? there's a weird like secret relish in that i think because there'll be this two-tiered society where there'll be people who can't go to the cinema so you think like it used to be fomo like you'd put up a picture going like i'm at the yeah. thing and, no one, and, <laughs> and i'm having fun with julie or whatever and now it's going to be double that like vaccinated people vaccine yeah. at the party and and then the non vaxxers like sorry non vaxxers bye bye express train till the icu or whatever <laughs> but yeah but it's like <laughs> that's what i heard someone say that's what i heard i heard someone it sounded say sounded like that. a german accent express train to the icu <laughs> it makes sense back. in a way yeah yeah exactly <laughs> um um knowing their attitudes yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah it, it's weird in the sense that i think there's a secret relish where it's like the beer will taste really good but even better knowing they can't have it you know like you know like in dante's inferno there's the, the they have heaven and hell right but part of heaven is like you get sick of riding unicorns and eating truffle mm -hmm. after a while yeah so so you you you've got to take enjoy in watching the the people in hell suffer so that heaven feels better. Yeah, like they put webcams in hell and then live stream them to heaven. Right. So you can see someone get, you know, pitchforked. Right. So in Dante's Inferno, which for people listening is is an old story, right? Where a guy travels to hell and back. He's in hell for a bit. And right. um and back but, and so on but yeah right um and 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 there's a point where that that in heaven the people in heaven watch the people in hell as sort of a, a booster to be like oh heaven's good but it's part of it is also just much better to see people in hell while you're in heaven makes it more of a fun right experience and, and you're saying that the vaccinated will watch cctv footage of the unvaccinated trying to get into the pub exactly then it'll make the beer taste better when you see a guy with dreadlocks who went down a QAnon rabbit hole be turned away by a security guard <laughs> you, you you don't have a vaccine passport mate you've got to go he's like fuck <laughs> like he just wants to catch up does the bouncer have to be a wog had to be a wog i might <laughs> You don't have a passport. You got a flip phone because you don't believe in surveillance capitalism. You got to go home, bro. <laughs> but yeah, that, I think that's the relish that is now being felt. You know what I mean? Like it's like, oh, it'll yep. be even funner now that people can't do it. Right, right. It's yeah. the rel. It's the it's the relish you need for your hedonic adaptation. You know. Right, a little bit of yeah, a little sprinkling on top. Uh, yeah, of the, of the of the already enjoying moment. Um. You know, I, I just went and got a haircut right before this podcast. Oh, and yeah. Another privilege. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry to rub it in. No, no. It's just funny to be like, I got a haircut. It's a privilege. Yeah, yeah. So living a pretty <laughs> privileged life. Yeah, um, yeah. It's funny, man, because I get on really well with my hairdresser while I'm sitting down. Right. Like, have you ever noticed that, like, if you have a relationship, like, say, with a barista or like say a hairdresser or anything like that, as soon as they're out of that environment, it's like you don't know each other or something. Right. Like if yeah. I'm sitting there in the chair and he's like talking, we're talking, blah, 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 blah. 
And then I get up and he walks me to the door or whatever, like, cause I'm about to leave. And it's like, oh yes. Yeah, so, um, yeah. Well, like, it, like, like the idea of running into him on the street is absolutely horrifying. But if I'm sitting in the chair with the thing on and he's working on my hair, we can talk all day about relationships and politics. But as soon as you get out of that, it's like seeing your I, barista not behind the copy machine. Does that make sense? Yeah, because they become like sort of a like sort of a centaur like mermaid thing with the coffee machine. So like it's becomes yeah. part of they're like they're sort of like a bionic part human part. Yeah. Like psh, a macchiato. Like yeah. so when they're buying you're like, oh I didn't know you had weird thighs. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know you weren't part coffee machine, part human. Central. Yeah, that would be yeah. A, that's the kind of mythological creature someone will come up with these days. Like it used to be half bull, half human, lion god, and now it's like macchiato, macchiato man. It's like a- <laughs> <laughs> he just spitfires like hot coffee, like yeah, yeah, out of his like body, like out of his torso. Yeah, he's just got a, like an expression. <laughs> Different types of milk. He'll steam you. He'll steam burn you. Yes, he's quite. It's not quiet. building a rapport. You didn't build a rapport. I'm going to steam burn you. <laughs> he could like have lactated like oat milk out of his things and yeah. stuff. Like just and he's quite effeminate. Like you should have. You'll get get out of my way. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. You know, like he's quite effeminate. Like hipstery. Like uh, kind of dude. That's um, the thing. It's like, I agree with what you say. It's like when you see your maths teacher at a DVD store oh. when you're a kid, it's like weird. It's like, oh, Mr. Harrison's getting face off or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like It's just, it doesn't compute. Like you only understand them from a chair to whiteboard perspective. It's a fish out of water, isn't it? It's like seeing a, a fish walking on land or something, you know, or a, a lion in the city. It's like, whoa. The math yeah. teachers at a restaurant. I remember that. I got so drunk on Goon when I was in high school. And then like, saw we were all walking down the middle of Toowoomba and my, my economics teacher was on a date in a restaurant. And I was like, Hey, fucking Mr. Munro and shit. Just like on the, like, pit, like vomiting pissed. And he was just Brilliant. in there like having a date. Yeah. You just don't humiliating him. Oh. I think I pissed on the window. But there's nothing he could do because it was out of school. Oh, you were finished. You were graduated. No, but oh. it, but but there like it was out of school hours and I oh, wasn't right. a So yeah, I mean, oh I, I don't think he ever looked at me the same. But yeah, it's like but my he mate, shouldn't have my a life got, outside of what my mate. Got it's caught, his fault. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> my mate got caught doing graffiti. Me and him got caught doing graffiti, and and he got to the got put in the cop station and the cop said what's your name and he lied and said it was the deputy headmaster's son like he said i'm james robinson yeah which is the deputy headmaster's son and so they called the deputy headmaster at three in the morning whose son happened to be out that night staying over at a friend's place and went your son's in the cop station for doing graffiti and he was like what and came down it was just my mate kai Oh my god! He's just like, oh no, that's not uh, my son. That's Linkerhoff. And then <laughs> the next day at school, he said to he said to Kai, um, "I'll forgive you as a parent. I'll I'll forgive you as a student, but I'll never forgive you as a person." And Kai was like, "Yeah, yeah, whatever, man." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like, yeah. He was like, it, like, yeah. It's like you're the like I don't yeah you're the deputy headmaster. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, it's funny when they say something real profound like that because that sounds like a, a philosophical quote or whatever. Like, I'll forgive you as a student, but not as a human or whatever. Yeah, yeah but like it sounds sort of profound. It's funny. Like the other thing I was going to say about the barista is like because I spend, I live alone and often write during the day. Like I don't see anyone, so the, I've realised that the barista. Is like my only human contact in a day. So they get this massive unloading of unnecessarily deep like conversation because she's the only person I talk to. Right. Yeah. So I turn up in the mornings like, Hey, uh, whew, yeah. Having trouble sleeping at the moment, you know, a lot of repetitive thoughts and thinking 
a lot and you know maybe i could be a better person i don't know you know i think i'm becoming my father she's like yeah yeah she's always just like yeah so just a long black or yeah yeah you know like she's not if that's your only interaction then small talk becomes yeah like deep talk yeah but only like small talk. talks yeah like she's not saying anything back she just has to go mm, that's good <laughs> sometimes you just need to get it out you don't care if they don't hit the ball back you know well that's why you see people walking down the street just talking to themselves like lunatics screaming like i saw one today in the city and it's like yeah i get that yeah like you want to win that argument or whatever that you never got to win just have it out now that's the thing if you just have a shower get a haircut you can then do it to people you know because those people do it to the void but if they just scrubbed up a bit they could go to a cafe and do it yeah yeah you know what i'm saying <laughs> people do like that it would to be more and baristas every day mm. like unload their problems yeah you know it's uh there's psychologists i kind of am looking forward to getting to that age where you know like baby boomers just love watching uh tv shows about brutal murders that happen in quaint villages my mum is exactly that. She's always got some new weird, like British crime where they're like out in a village and it's like, oh, well, I'm not quite sure what happened here. It was quite odd, really. Um, well, Richard came out and uh, he didn't come home, which is like a scone. It's like this yeah. sort of weird, like, gent yeah. like gentrified Ho murder. Wholesome, wholesome homicide, I call it. <laughs> so yeah. It's like it's, a it's bread just basket a... and apples and it's like in the kitchen and it's quiet. Did you hear about the peach cobbler farmer? He's had his head caved in with a rock. <laughs> like it's just, <laughs> yeah, it's quaint, quaint, brutal, brutal, but it's... yeah, it's quaint. And then they sit down and talk about it. Well, I, yes, I don't know how go caved his head in. He did. Yes. Well, have well, a cup strange, of tea. Isn't it? Have, have a crumpet. Cup of, have a crumpet and a cup of tea. And we'll discuss it because his head's been caved in, obviously. <laughs> he's been left in the stables to rot. <laughs> like, you're well, like, oh, this is nice. You know, because that's not how we like as millennial, like, and younger people, we like brute, like the American style. Like boomers aren't into that shit. Like the American, yeah, we fucking found him. A fucking, some guy fucked his ass to death. He's all yeah, cut yeah. up out the back, you know. Rectal bleeding. <laughs> it's rectal bleeding killed the motherfucker. But yeah, that's because it's brutal murders happening in brutal scenarios. Yeah, it's like a crammed New York City apartment. Yeah, he fucking tossed his fucking body up the fucking edge there. Yeah, he's all yeah, cut yeah. up. He's guts all down the side of the building. You cut his head off, bled out in the fucking car park. <laughs> yeah, then he raped his fucking head. Skull meanwhile, fucked him. Meanwhile, like, boomers are like, man, well, it seems that, uh, yeah, well, the horse stomped his, caved his head in there. I'm not quite sure really where he is anymore. Well, she, you see, she, she won the, she won the scones, best scone, first prize for best scones at the county fair, got jealous, Miss Marple slit her throat with a, with a, with a peach core, with the core of a peach. <laughs> well, that's quite unusual. It is quite, yes. Would you like some jam? Yeah. Meanwhile, Marmalade. You, got, I, I, you mean you got NCIS for a iced tea's like what do you mean he shoved a brick of heroin up his ass yeah 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 curb stomped him for fun <laughs> he curb stomped him for a bit of fun in a sewer yeah <laughs> like it's just it's filthy stuff happening in filthy yeah. areas whereas the miss marple's crumpet circle stuff is like a brutal murder happening in a sanitized yeah i remember seeing like in a cottage sitting around in like a knitting thing it's like yeah well yeah. you know it doesn't surprise me that they fisted him to death up the ass and uh yeah, anyway <laughs> oh, yeah that's it sneaks it in yeah <laughs> yeah um that's because you know, boomers don't want to they want it they want it digestible you know yeah they want it digestible they want the suspect to be wearing a cardigan and have like Dumbledore glasses and be like, well, I never presumably didn't, wasn't there, my lord. Well, you won't find my fingerprints on the dildo. Yeah. <laughs> I wasn't even knew it. The cop <laughs> looks like Postman Pat. He's got yeah. that Postman Pat vibe. Like, I sentenced you to four months in a cottage with no, 
you'll be having no muffins from the blueberry <laughs> fair, you know, like it's like all weird punishments yeah, yeah. and so on. Oh, but they love that. Do, do your parents like that other baby boomer stuff, that Nordic noir, you know, that Swedish type? That's a bit more That's the, the other thing for the intellectual boomer who considers himself right. cultured, I think. The mainstream, like my <laughs> mum, my mum, my mum, I don't think dad watches any of it, but my mum watches the quaint village murders. Where someone so that's a basic like tractor. And, <laughs> right. uh, and then, yeah, but the Nordic noir is more of the, it's a bit, a bit more exotic for the, for the boomer. It, like Norwegian brutal murder. Cause that's weird. Cause it's based around murders that happen in a country that has no crime. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> The there's no crime in a, yeah like there's maximum equality complete record levels of social trust like no one's having their head caved in with a hammer right you know yeah. so they have to, that's why their their stories are always a bit more far-fetched or kind of unrealistic because it's like it's not happening it, it's in the science fiction section of netflix you know like Nordic <laughs> Noir, like because it you're not gonna probably the safest place in the world like yeah. yeah, can you imagine being scared in Sweden? Yeah, of like, what? Yeah, when they when you get mugged there, they apologize to you. You know, they're like, "I'm sorry for inconveniencing you." <laughs> you know, like it's not they, intimidating. They, they come up with the most gruesome shit, though, don't they? Even though I think there's a lot of darkness if you scratch the surface of those Scandinavian utopias, right? Like girl with the Be- dragon tattoo and shit, isn't that from a Scandinavian film? And it's it, maybe it's just because things are so good there, they can let their imaginations run wild, right? Yeah, old Oslo or whatever's like sitting in the sauna doing you know, jumping into the snow and then eating a fish with government welfare subsidized, you know, having to work oil, three oil days money a week, oil money going because like, they nationalized the oil supply. Oh, I just thought to myself that maybe it would be funny if someone uh got stomped to death by uh, by a, a smash the head with a rock and someone raped their dead body. I don't know. I just thought of that then. Oh, that's a good idea, yeah. Oslo. Maybe if we shed it in the snow, it would be interesting if it's dismembered. <laughs> the body could be separated in all the different places, like Iceland. I don't know. <laughs> uh, like- they trust their people so much, they just let COVID rip as well. They're like, just let it rip. We're not going to shut down the karaoke bars. Don't be silly. People yeah, will do as they're told. Yeah, they just trust that it's going to. Um, that people are just going to just listen to the law and just be logical and be like yeah, social yeah. distance and all that. It's only reasonable. In America, yeah. they're like, you won't make me social distance. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, just like total <laughs> chaos and. They had a guy that they had like, you know, those anti-vaxxers, like those people that are like, you know, radio hosts or whatever, like anti-vaxxer. And they had like this thing where they went into the hospital of the ICU ward and they were talking to like this anti-vaxxer. Oh, yeah. Who who was on a ventilator. Yeah. And like they only had enough energy to like answer a few interview questions. Right. And then he was like, so, so would you now consider getting the vaccine? And he's like, I'd have to think about it. So he'd had COVID. Yeah. And he was still like, I don't know, still might not be real. He's like, do you want the vaccine? He's like, you give me something to think about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, he's, like still, he's, still, he's still he's still, on the fence, even though he's been ravaged by the disease. He's been ravaged and he's still like, <laughs> I don't know. It's like, I'll have to look into it. Yeah. Leave me a I pamphlet. Guess- I'll have a read. Yeah. He's like, I'm going to research it now. You know, one of the things that I kind of, I found really interesting now, I saw this thing on the internet, people going, uh, uh, people complaining and being outraged at people doing selfies at Auschwitz. Mm. And obviously, you know, you do a selfie at Auschwitz, but doing like, you know, like, hey, at Auschwitz, you know, and like people were doing yoga poses and people were complaining, obviously, like, hey, come on, um, you know, show some fucking respect. I just think it's, it just just so for me sum, summarizes like the way people think these days same thing happened with anzac day the turkish government made, made a complaint 
because Aussies were just going over to Gallipoli and just getting pissed and leaving all the bottles behind and shit. It's unbelievable. It's just like no one can do anything solemn or, you know, it's just like got to be, woo, you know. Everything, everything's a party. Everything's Even the mundane act of shopping is a party now. Woolworths yeah. is like a dubstep. They're playing dubstep. They are, literally. You know? You're, you're got, trying to find got a got good, good avocado. Station. It's like, doosh, doosh. Do you see people just going like that? Like, doosh, yeah, doosh, they've got a radio. Fucking, yeah, they got a rock melon and there's a fucking like red hot chili peppers playing. Yeah. <laughs> the other day I was in an Uber and, and, and they were listening to Woolworths radio. And I was like, I didn't know. Oh, really? Listen. I didn't know you could listen to it outside of <laughs> Like what kind oh. of dystopian shit is this? Get offered a job at nah, I'm actually auditioning to be the Coles Radio DJ. <laughs> they've got a they've got a DJ at Chemist Warehouse now. Have you heard that? A DJ. Yeah, he's like coming at your chem- chemist warehouse. Panadol, get your Panadol. <laughs> <laughs> is he in the store or is it just uh, like it, a- no, it's it's like a it's literally like the radio they play in Chemist Warehouse. I don't know if you can get that station on, like, in your car. This guy had it in his car. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I'm like, what kind of low-level bass shit are you fucking tune into Woolworths, man? Like, isn't that, there's nothing worse than when you're at, like, Woolworths just confused uh, in a state of malaise. Like, you've already been four times because yeah. you can't get your shit together to write a list. Yeah. And you're like, oh, fuck, I need... <laughs> And then like fucking, I need that one. Yeah, and Pitbull comes on when you're lost in the fucking appliances, <laughs> like the you know the you know where the the weird aisle that's got napkins and popsicles and fucking Pitbulls. Like, yeah. Hey, us, the, we came to party. <laughs> you're like, what? Is, what is? What is? It's what so is mundane. Is it's you so know? mundane. Your thing is like you're trying to find like a little umbrella to put in a Bloody Mary that you're making at home. So it's yeah. just this mundane thing of like. Yeah. And then it's under the bridge is playing. Yeah. I don't ever. And most people should. <laughs> I'll get started. Chemical high. <laughs> like you people like buying parsley. It's, it's just, it's so perverse, eh? And it like, I stuff. see so many people wearing AirPods now, like while they shop. Yeah. It's like a party within a party, like a Russian doll. So yeah. you got like, I don't want to nail my hair. Sam Paul here. But then there's someone just like with their pods going douche, douche, play that bass. Play. Like there's another party in the yeah. party. Yeah. Because God forbid you can't just be in one party. You've got to have your own organized. You're like, I want this type of party. I'm not in the mood for, I don't ever want to. Like a power ballad. <laughs> I want like, yo, yo, you fuck that motherfucker sitting back. Like, yeah. you know, the bitch. I don't want like, champagne. yo, 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 come get a story. Yo, yo. Like they don't want that kind of thing. They want like bitches in the club. Yeah. <laughs> Someone with their pods just got bitches in the club. But then there's other times when they play like bitches in the club in the Woolworths, Coles radio DJs, like let's get some R&B going, like in yeah. the fresh food aisle. Yeah. And then there's someone listening to you, yeah, corn gear store, like, <laughs> this, like it can flip <laughs> with the AirPods. Yeah, yeah. Completely detached it- from being present in the shop just going is this the right avocado like be alone with the avocado just be bored you know that's why people are at the anzac day thing like you know it can't be just let's go to anzac day and actually do it for remembrance and have a solemn day that isn't like a celebration because we want to we want everything to be fun because that's why wouldn't you you know yeah so people turn up to fucking anzac day like you know, like it's a piss up and they're like, dan, 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 it becomes dan, 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 boom, boom, stick it there. You're in the war poems, like, yo, in the trenches, motherfuckers. Be scared. And, you know, people are Woo. <laughs> just dubstep in the trenches, like, doosh, doosh, like they were playing rock yeah. that bass. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's you were saying how you, oh, you. you went on a, went on a Kentucky tour and, and one of the stops at Germany was one of the concentration camps. Dekur, is that what it is? Dekau, I think. Dekau. I think it yeah, rhymes. So the, 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 yeah. The, the Kentucky tour stopped at a concentration camp. Yeah. So like you find yourself, you're in board shorts and a Hawaiian shirt hung over because you did Molly the night before. With a wall. You know, there's like, yeah. 
<laughs> with a wog that told you it was Molly. Ooh. And there's just like some fucking guy like in a flannelette, just like half pissed at the camp. Yeah. Just going like, man, do they have a bottle out here? What the fuck is this? Eh? Like, do you know what I mean? Like that's. <laughs> yeah. And they're stumbling. Like it's so like- disrespectful. Yeah. It's so disrespectful. Someone was smoking a joint. Like you could just smell weed. Like. <laughs> Oh, this is fucking at a concentration camp. It's like, is that where you want to trip? You want to get Cheech and Chong? Yeah, you want to get the munchies in the fucking Auschwitz? Yeah. Because that's what they we don't want do catering. Now. They want to go to Anne Frank's house and have a buffet. Yeah. Gentrify Anne House and <laughs> Frank's house. <laughs> like, <laughs> make it into an Airbnb experience. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like you, you stay in the house. It's like all the same. Like you know, like a guard comes up and frightens you. Like whoa, yeah. Eating a eating a croissant. Yeah, because the longer time goes on, the more the more anything that's serious in our nation, any of our national days, or anything that's important to humanity becomes a party. Right. You know. So you think so, it's it's trickle down to party for everything? Oh man, you think the year after Auschwitz was a party? There were tourists. First, there's like the you know the the seriousness of it. There's right. nothing like you don't even go yeah. there. Then yeah. then it's like we go there to remember. Like wow, fuck, this happened here. Mm. Then it becomes a tourist attraction. It's like tourists come. Fuck, this is crazy. Then more time passes, and it's like wow, okay, great. Like you get the American. Like yeah, yeah. yeah. So they killed them all here. Wow. Do they have any muffins? Yeah, you know, like yeah, yeah. Loud, right. Like photographing, then like the fanny, fanny pack full of beef jerky. Like, oh my yeah. god. Yeah. <laughs> like just eating beef jerky, going, is this really what happened? This is yeah. crazy. Wow. And like, then like they start installing food and beverage shit in the thing. You know, then you can have drinks. Then they set up a cafe. You know. Yeah. And like you know the 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 fucking Auschwitz like like the the prison gardens turned into a fresh food organic shop and then you know like Genghis Khan like in Scotland there's castles there's just absolute horrors you know yeah horrors happen there evil king it'd be like and now you just go you can just party and shit because it's so long ago Braveheart was so long ago that now it's a party yeah and like it's like going it would be like going into Hitler's bunker in a hundred years and having a cocktail right. like yeah there was right. an evil warlord called hitler yeah it was crazy like just that base, Euro base, trash. Base, 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 base. <laughs> <laughs> apparently he died with cyanide it's an old poison like something yeah. that you think of out of a shakespeare poem yeah let's party fuck me in the ass bo 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 like they do an ammo and shit <laughs> yeah he took cyanide so so we could take ammo yeah <laughs> like and they link it like bunker. they make it solemn yeah. yeah, he died for us so that we could take armor. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> Fuck my ass. Boom, boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That Hitler's actually seems, sounds very German too. Yeah. To have like a techno party. Like... You know, like once Hitler becomes yeah. an ancient warlord, you know? Yeah, yeah. That, that will be... Maybe yeah, it's just it's... a perverse thing that we can't... We can't, it's hard for us to, like, we know how we should feel, but it's difficult. You know, like you were saying, you were watching that, that, that seaspiracy. Yeah. I, cause I was trying to like, you know, learn about, you know, you're trying like, oh, maybe I'll learn about the environment yeah. or whatever. But then like, cause you know, there's like prawns like stuck in like. <laughs> so seaspiracy is cans. a show, is, is, is a documentary about the destruction of the oceans. Yeah, and so it's very solemn, but I just like you keep seeing prawns and, and and like just these fish just swimming into plastic. And I was I got hungry for fish and chips. Like I was like I was like fuck, fish and chips is good, eh? Like it reminded me how yeah. good because I hadn't had fish and chips for so long. But then I started going fuck, tuna melts are good. Like right. like a good tuna a tuna sub would be. Like it wasn't having the right effect because, like, I was just like, those prawns look delicious in that plastic rat. Like, yeah, the plastic wasn't disgusting enough to override my your your heat. primal, yeah, 
the the simplistic part of the brain that just wants the the fun, the the sugar, the 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 potato chips. Because my mind is crying, but my palate's partying. You know. <laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, I wouldn't mind a seafood basket. Seeing all that, you know. Seeing all go, those. Let's fish. go to Woolworths and make a seafood basket. Seeing all these shopping, you know, shopping bags that the whales are eating. The whales love the shopping bags, and they're supposed to be so smart too. Like it's, well, they, you don't what? know. Yeah. Maybe they're doing yeah. it on purpose. Cause they call it microplastics, but maybe they're micro dosing plastics. So they the way we micro dose shrooms. Yeah. Yeah. And have like epiphany, you know, when you do shrooms, you're like, fuck, maybe I should create a startup yeah. called squiggle or whatever. Like you'll have an idea for like, yeah. oh, maybe I could invent a satellite that detects mel- melanomas or whatever. We use it to be creative. Like maybe they micro dose plastic bags to like have epiphanies about like existential like then they beach themselves on the because they're like there's no point right so you're saying that they're eating a bunch of plastic bags to get high or to have an understanding then they realize the truth and beach themselves yeah because they micro those plastic it's like the equivalent of when you take too much acid and think you can fly and jump off a cliff right i see what you mean so the ones that are micro dosing are thriving right in the Atlantic Ocean. Right. And they're the ones that double dropped on the beach. And the guy that, that accidentally kills himself jumping off a cliff thinking he can fly is like the our human equivalent of a beached whale. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He OD'd. Well, it all makes sense. Yeah. Have you ever seen on YouTube or whatever, um, like a, a video of, I saw this video that had gone viral of a, of a man wearing a pregnancy suit it's where like you wear a suit like something they'd use in the movies or whatever to feel what it feels like to be pregnant like a body suit that has the weight and and simulate simulating pregnancy for the man yeah i i've i've heard of it before yeah, so it's just something this this like I see them come up. It's I see them come up every now and then. It's like a dude going like, "Yeah, I try what it'd be like to be pregnant for a week." And whoa, dude, it was so hard. So he wore it for a whole week. Yeah, I don't know. I actually don't know how how long he wore it for, but uh, yeah, um, I, I just think that that's the. It just, I just think it's funny because it just how far men have come in regards to their like how involved they are with birthing and pregnancy because in my dad's day he wasn't allowed even in the room when 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 mum was giving birth men weren't allowed in the hospital so like dad this is a true story my dad dropped my mum off to give birth to my brother and then him and granddad went go-karting that's unbelievable. <laughs> so they dro- <laughs> they dropped mum off and then took the truck and trailer to the racetrack and then found out about my brother's birth was announced over the racetrack speaker. That was that sounds like a weird tradition. <laughs> like yeah, they announce yeah. it over the racing car speaker. That's how you find out that it's a gender reveal, but you're like, brum, brum, brum. It's a guy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like whenever there's someone's giving birth, you go to the racetrack, the guys go to the racetrack and the women go and give birth. And then traditionally, oh, yeah. you know, the, the man's name is announced over the loudspeaker of the racetrack. It's, it seems like something that you'd have to pretend you were disappointed. Like, Oh, I can't come in because of the rules. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, a shame. I'll have to go yeah. go karting. My, da- <laughs> my dad's a massive motorsport nut, and yeah, so for him, he'd be like, "Oh, really? Oh, well, I guess I'll go to the racetrack." Like he was, just, yeah. Like, it's just crazy. But um, you know, when my son was born, I was there and cut the umbilical cord, and was a big part of like nappies and walking at night and like putting them to sleep and feeding Patrick and stuff. Um, which is way different to my dad. My dad would always say to me, never change a nappy. Never change a single nappy, like bragging to me. Because he's like saying, I didn't have to get in with that dirty stuff. I was. Yeah. So weird. 
And I reckon in the future, like the way things are going, like what'll happen is the woman will give birth and the man will not only be present, but will be lying beside her, pushing a fake baby out of his asshole. Right. That seems like the natural progression from pregnancy suit to that. Right. That's and, the next level, right? And they'll measure the pain and it will be like, that's equal, it's equal pain. Like it, they'll, so they can share the pain and so on. And the men have to have it as well. So they'll use a pain measurement machine called yep. a traumaton that will give you like a, a yep. rating. Like yep. that's seven on the traumaton. Yeah. They both were seven during the birth. And then that'll be on wow. Instagram. Like my husband had the same trauma as me. And everyone's like, yeah, like that's great. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't even know. Like, I don't know what, I don't even know what masculinity is anymore. Like, I think it used to be quite, two-dimensional you know tough guy with a cigarette and a motorbike goes to the gym heterosexual like the old 1950s kind of man yeah but now it's I like mean, what is it yeah for, like who who is like you know um like, like russell crowe gladiator kind of thing yeah is that but is that what a man is now Yeah, I mean, it, it's it, it feels weird to have to experience the same pain <laughs> to, to to prove empathy. You know what I mean? About like the birthing thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, like it's like if your your friend had a brain tumor and then you had, you know, a, yeah. you wore a helmet that like gave you headaches and stuff. So you're like, I feel your brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i guess there's something ah. nice about it but yeah i don't know like i it, think like when i think of masculinity now like if someone's like a man man like a traditional masculine man i think they're right wing like it seems like a right wing thing yeah unless you get like yeah you get the real but the best ones is when like you know they subvert that where they look like they're a bikey for the chimichiros or whatever Right. But then they also voted yes for gay marriage or whatever. You know what I mean? You're like, whoa. Yeah. 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 I know what you mean. Yeah. I'm I thought he curb like stomp minorities, but actually he's got a Thai wife, you know? Yeah. Like it's a weird, <laughs> like it's weird, like subversion. Yeah. You get that sometimes, eh? especially like we were saying, like with the Joe Rogan thing phenomena, where right, like meathead yeah. UFC fighters are like also like, yeah, I was reading Nietzsche. Yeah. And apparently God is dead while he like skulls a protein shake. Yeah. It that's and then that becomes this fascinating contradiction, like the Hemingway effect, you know, the sensitivity of a poet but still coward punching sailors yeah. at the docks. <laughs> He's like writing a little haiku about a dandelion and then going, What the fuck do you say, mate, about my poem? You know, that that Hemingway version of masculinity is like the ultimate where it's like you get both. Yeah, I mean that the Rogan effect is such a it's just such a funny version of that because I think we talked about this maybe even in the last podcast about how conspiracy theories used to be really fringe. Yeah, like fringe mentally ill people that were crazy that lived out of town in a weird cave or like in the forest and some, you know, those were the kind of people that were conspiracy theorists. But now, like you know, Rogan's gotten your, your, your old mate is doing deadlifts you know, and with the, with the neck tattoo going like, yeah, the UFOs, man, they're coming. Yeah. 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 They're real. You know, like he's gotten them into conspiracy theories. Yeah. You, you got the guy with the neck busting out that looks like a fridge coming out of the gym after yeah. doing squats, just going COVID's a bioweapon. Yeah. You know, it's, it's part of the deep state. Yeah. Those worlds um, were never going to meet in the nineties. Where would the, that world meet? Jim junkie meets conspiracy theorist. No, you don't think of a conspiracy theorist as like doing a juice cleanse in the nineties. <laughs> it's so true. Eh? <laughs> like it's wild. Yeah. In the movies, it was always a guy on a mobility scooter that would come in with like a beard Gandalf beard. Yeah. Be like I've got an hour to live, but I was abducted. Yeah. 
some very obscure figure surrounded by dead ferrets in an apartment like yeah dilapidated like, yeah piles of books and scraps and shit everywhere and like he's nutted some puzzle out on the wall but now yeah, yeah. you know like like i said like now like my physio you know go to my physio and he's sending me videos now about ancient civilizations that 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 are trying to harvest our souls yeah because did not see that yeah. coming like is there anyone like, who isn't a conspiracy theorist now yeah it's like even fucking the host of ninja warrior you half expect to just be like yep yeah, it was released as a bioweapon you know they probably think that yeah it's like the, yeah it's like uh twin towers there was a third building but anyway, our next contestant's from the Sunshine Coast, and she's a yeah, yeah, you know. yeah. It's it's on free to air now. Seven mate, <laughs> you know, yeah, just conspiracy you, theorists. You got Jamie Oliver, like yeah. You got a D got a chicken. The moon landing didn't happen, mate. Anyway, How it's a it chicken possible? biodynamic. Look yeah. at the shadows of them. Yeah, they're on the moon. Like yeah, like why is there shadows? They're on the moon. Anyway, huh? Uh, stuff. There's something. Stuff to, Tarragon's stuff, a good herb chicken. for it. <laughs> See, one thing that isn't been staged is this. This chicken, mate. Fucking farm to table, You can yeah? believe this. You can't believe much of what the media says now. Anyway. It, it is weird that, yeah, because, it, it, like, I remember anti-vax thing. That used to be a personality quirk from Mullen Bimby. You know, it'd be, like, an interesting thing about some Oh, he's an anti-vax, like, he's an interesting yeah. person. Like, you know. Interesting. Welcome. Um, but it, it suddenly just from some coincidence, that fringe conspiracy belief has become suddenly relevant. To totally. And nobody believes the media anymore, right? Like nobody. So the mainstream media has taken a real hit. And now, and this is where it gets problematic for comedians. Now people don't want the news. They want to be entertained with the news and they're the most popular news shows now. So get this more popular than the news is a show making fun of the news. That's a fact because people yeah. want to get their news entertaining. That's what the project is. It's a poor attempt at trying to make news fun and funny. They got Tommy little there with his abs and whatnot going like, look at me abs. Here's some joke about toilets and uh, yeah. Anyway, Afghanistan, who's going to fill that power vacuum? Yeah, it's, it's, it's all confusing. muddled up and it's making it hard it, for us. Well, cause when you were a kid, you went to the circus. It wasn't like the clown started doing like gave you started talking about a graph. Yeah. About the economy. Of like pollution levels or whatever. Yeah. yeah. He didn't expect the clown to be like, dun, 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 and gets out of the little yeah. car. And then he's like, CO2 levels in the equator. It's resulting in a weather yeah. change. And uh, the GDP of China is affecting iron ore prices. <laughs> like does the nose. Yeah. It's fucking, yeah. it's confusing. It's making it hard for us because irony is dying. No one believes in, in irony anymore. And um, because they expect comedians to be telling the truth. Like we've become these, we've made ourselves these weird, like truth telling kind of like instead of the news almost kind of figures do you think a different genre should should do the news it shouldn't be the comedy it shouldn't be comedy you know like that's the worst genre to mix because news isn't funny news news shouldn't be funny if you're going to use a genre why not drama they get big famous celebrity comedians like jim jeffries out there you know talking about the news and whatnot he's got his own news entertainment show why not robert de niro you know, yeah. why not drama? Why not someone doing a monologue and then segueing into into news that way instead of segueing into jokes? Have the, Joe Pesci do the Goodfellas monologue? Like, hey, you think I'm funny? How the fuck am I funny? You think I'm a clown? Do I entertain you? No, Joey, I'm just saying it's a funny story. Yeah, yeah how yeah. the fuck am I funny? Like, ha ha, funny or strange funny? Anyway, the, you think the, the, the Greenland at the moment, there's a problem with the. The uh, the ice is melting. It's causing the methane to release. It's heating up the planet. It's a real problem at the moment. Now it's over to T Timmy with the weather. Then the, you know, you got Daniel Day Lewis just going. This is not my milkshake. Okay, <laughs> all right. 
Look at the Gaza Strip. Up. You think it's funny? The Gaza Strip is serious. Yeah. Sad. <laughs> yeah. You know, or a car chase. Yeah. You know, like the, the news in a car. So it's entertaining. Don't you fucking die on me. Don't you fucking die on me. Look at me, Joey. Listen. America's also pulling out of Libya as well. It's left a power vacuum there. So we're going to have to see what happens after the next election in Libya. Anyway, it's over to the Wall Street news with uh, with John. Back to shooting. And yeah, stuff, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's because then you get in with the drama. And, and then, then it, the dr- drama uh, uh, aligns more with new- news is always dramatic. It's never funny. People can't have the news straight anymore. They've, it's got to be entertaining. I'm just saying, choose your genre. It's the oil spill funny, you know? Well, they Pelicans. try and do it on the, they try and do it on the yeah, project. Yeah. You've got Tommy Little there going, you know, eh, you know, they spilled the oil out there, you know. It's a tragedy, but um, I spilled a bit of oil the other day filling up my car. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, I put a bit of oil on my abs when I go sunbaking. It should be, yeah, just face to camera tragedy. Just tragic, dramatic actors like yeah. Liam Neeson should be doing the weather report. Yeah. You know, the polar ice caps are melting. Your daughter's been abducted <laughs> and it's melting. <laughs> and it keeps rising and it's going to get worse. You're going to have to scuba dive to work. You know, just really. Yeah. And if he like pathos, have pathos to it. It shouldn't be silly. It should be pathos. Like this is the end (laughs) kind of thing, you know, straight. Yeah. I think you're right. And, and, but also entertaining. Like, Mm. as in, you know, he has a gun and there's a, it could be a storyline. Yeah. Comedy is in news because people don't want to just watch the boring old news this week in 7 p.m., blah, blah, blah. You know, yeah. I don't have a story like, you know, like you say, like Liam Neeson's like, yeah, they've got, to, they've got my daughter. And after this, I'm going to go for her. But before I do, I've got this gun that's loaded. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you about the oil prices this week. Commodities down, NASDAQ up, you know, and then, you know. As Albanian of, terrorists are active. And then they're he's active. Like, like maybe a guy tries to attack him and he fights him off and then does the rest of the news and. And you're like, oh, that was entertaining. And I've also found out about the NASDAQ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you got like John Wick explaining the yeah. global financial crisis. Yeah. Just Jack like Keanu smashing Reeves and doing the slow like matrix thing. And there's like e- economic figures shooting past him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's um, just market fluctuations coming at him. Yeah. He's dodging market fluctuations and commodities because I mean it's making our job hard because no one gets irony anymore. Yeah, yeah. You say, you you say know, something ironically, and they're like, "That's real." The three Stooges you're the news people, aren't you? Yeah, the three Stooges weren't doing reports on like Germany invading Poland, you know? Yeah, boy. Like boy. <laughs> Nazis have taken Nazis have taken Belgium. You mutt. Yeah, that's some. Um, <laughs> uh yeah that it, 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 it's just a bizarre uh it's it's like alien versus predator you know it shouldn't be mixed <laughs> yeah it's fucking it's salted caramel you know yeah 